One of the biggest struggles that I have as a live streamer is that I need to bring people into live streams remotely. You've probably seen some of my videos on bringing in a remote presenter over Zoom and using Mix Minus Audio so we can incorporate them into a live stream. But there's one secret weapon that I've also been using in the background for the past three years that allows me to record high quality videos of presenters or interviews remotely without the concern for internet dropouts or random glitches in the recording. Now, full transparency, this is a sponsored video. However, I would not choose to create a video for a company like this if I wasn't using their tool and if I didn't really love it. I recommend it to all of my friends and colleagues for virtual recordings, and yes, it's way better than Zoom. You'll see why in just a moment. The coolest part about this tool that I'm going to share with you is that it could record in 4K if you send your remote guest the right camera, and it can record individual video feeds for multiple guests. That means I could have a full panel discussion between four, five, or even six people, and each one is recorded individually. Then I can edit the footage later, so if someone sneezes while a different person is talking, I don't run into the same issues that I would in a Zoom recording where everything is mixed down into one single audio file. Did I mention if you don't want to take all of the time to do the editing, they have a magic editor to save you the trouble? So what's the tool? It's riverside.fm, and if you use my link below this video, I do receive a small thanks that helps me keep this channel going. Not to mention, a like and subscribe also helps me out too. It's also important to mention that Riverside has helped me beyond just live streams and has allowed me to land entire projects for clients where I can remotely record their interviews and create content for them. Truthfully, it's opened up a new path for my business where I can sit comfortably at home or in my office and record people on the other side of the globe. Here, let me show you how it works because it's so darn easy that after you watch this training, you'll see even more ways that you could be using it. Start out by clicking the link below this video and you'll be taken to Riverside's website to make an account. From there, you'll log into your dashboard. In your dashboard, you'll see a very simple layout starting with the studios. It's here that you can create a studio for each client or each project. This helps you keep things organized for later down the road when you want to go back in and find older projects. Hit create new and give your studio a name, and it's here that you'll want to choose a recording type. In my case, I'm almost always recording video, but this is a great tool for audio only podcasts as well. Once you've set up your studio, you can either enter the studio right away if you are recording right then and there, or you can continue with the setup. I'll continue with the setup for now, and it's here that you can schedule the studio to be used for recording at a certain day and time, which I like because you can invite participants to the studio and they'll automatically receive emails instructing them on what to do. Next, you can invite your participants. There's four main roles to consider in the studio. There's the host, which can be recorded and manages each session. They're the only role that starts and stops the recording. If I'm hosting a session and I don't want myself recorded, I can simply turn off my camera and mic once I'm in the studio. Next, there's the guests who are recorded, can share screens, and can adjust their own audio and video settings. Then we have producers who are not recorded but can be seen and heard by the other guests. And lastly, audience members can watch the whole thing and talk in the chat window, but they won't be included in the recording. What I like about Riverside is you don't have to remember all of this because it's right there on the page and there's plenty of learn more buttons to make sure that you're choosing the right options. Finally, we'll hit create show and from here you can enter your studio. As you enter the studio, you'll be asked to check your camera settings and audio settings before joining. Oh, and for the best performance, I recommend using this on Google Chrome, but they do have an iPhone and Android app as well if you're on mobile. This is a great setup if you have a guest dialed in remotely and they've got a fancy new iPhone with a really nice camera on it. Oftentimes, that can look better than the webcam that's built into a computer and they can hook up their AirPods for audio and to avoid echoes. Once in the studio, you'll be able to control everything about the recording. In the sidebar, you can name your recording, adjust audio settings for each guest, and even turn down someone's mic if they're coming in hot. A unique feature that I like is each user will have a drop down menu where you can see what microphone and camera they're using, so if you need to troubleshoot, you can help your guests determine if their settings are set properly. 
There's a chat room in the sidebar and even a media section if you want to add a clap or a laugh track. And when you're ready to record, simply press the record button at the bottom of the screen. The studio will begin recording and you'll see a five second countdown timer before beginning. Once it starts to record, you'll see the people section in the right sidebar and it tracks how much of their data is uploaded during the recording. For anyone on a weaker internet connection, you can stop the recording and keep them in the studio room until the recording is finished, so it doesn't have to be done uploading when you stop the record. You just have to make sure that they don't close out of the window until it hits 100%. Once the recording is complete, you can end your session and download the individual video tracks for each person that was in the studio. So where can this be used? It goes far beyond just a live stream, but I would say my first use case has been to record presenters and speakers remotely who are not able to attend an event live and in person. We've used these recordings to fill intermissions in a live stream with panel discussions or even to record someone's PowerPoint slides with their presentations side by side. That's the beauty of Riverside is it will record their screen and their camera as isolated video files. They store the recordings online, so you could even provide your account to a client to record their own content, and then you can access the downloads later. Another usage case is simply for recording video and or audio podcasts. So if you offer that as a service, it's a super affordable tool to do so. Now that you've seen how Riverside works, I wanna reiterate that I've been using it for the past three years, and I wouldn't choose to recommend a tool on my YouTube channel if it wasn't something that I use all the time and recommend to others. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below, and if you wanna sign up to start using it, the link is in the description. Thanks again for watching this tutorial on how to use Riverside, and I hope you find ways to use it in your workflow this year.